there's storm water. Again, we'll be kind of now moving into this uh, process. Um, the school committee will have its time frame for the budget. The city council, once I submit my budget under the charter, there's now new rules about having public hearings. And, 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 uh, and the goal, of obviously, is to get a balanced budget by, uh, by July, by June 30th. And we'll do our best to do that, again, trying to maintain uh, the quality services that we provide and, and trying to continue to provide the best education we can provide. And I'll be working school committee working with the city council to try to achieve that goal. Uh, no, a couple of comments. Um, one, again, not only was this a very clear presentation, but also the earliest we've ever had. We've never had this discussion in, at the end of January, and we've never sat with our, our city councilors. Uh, it's really usually we sit together in, uh, in May where you make comments on how we've chosen to spend the money that we have. So that's very different. Um, it, there isn't much room right now for a discussion between the, the two boards, and I'm wondering um, if, 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 if uh, this is really meant to be just a presentation or if you're also looking for us to have discussion. So I wanted to comment on, on two other things. One, I'm sure I wasn't the only school committee member who was very disappointed after li listening to the, um, the governor speak. I was very uplifted by his focus on um, education in particular. I was very disappointed to hear that the grand total coming to Northampton was $71,000. Um, when, when I first heard that number, I thought, oh my goodness, after all of that um, excitement about him you know, really talking about education in Massachusetts, um, it doesn't really get us very far here, um, especially with, that, with the deficit that we're going into the, the budget season with. Um, but the other thing that I want to comment on um, you know, you, you made a comment about how we have to tell the story to all the unions that we're negotiating with, and, and um, Councilor Tacey is asking, you know, what are we going to the tables with? This isn't the first time the, the um, members of the unions are hearing this sad story, and I just want to say that this is such a, a, a difficult story to have to keep telling the same people who are working so hard for us. Um, I'm not saying anything that you all don't know, but um, it, it's one thing to say we need to tell the story and then you can hear this is another thing to be on the other side of that, you know, to be at the table and, um, and to hear that and, and to continue working and be motivated and to do the job that they're all doing. Um, so I just, just wanted to comment on that because I, it's, you know, it's just year after year of not being able to provide for them, provide for our students, provide for our district in the way that we would like to. It's one thing for the superintendent to come and tell us you know, how we can improve our district and to, um, the, the, the plan, what was, what do we call it, the plan that you came up with, the ideal uh, uh, educationally sound budget, but we don't have, we don't have education, we don't have sound money to, to approach yes. that with, and um, I'm, I, you know, it's disheartening. I, I don't mean to, I, I speak from school committee, but I speak as a member of the, of the community for all of our departments exactly. and all the people who are working for us. I don't expect you to have an answer for that. I'm just commenting that it's, you know, we're, we're telling the same sub story year after year. And um, even when the governor comes to us and says, we're going to give up, give monies now for education and for infrastructure for transportation, and when it comes to the individual cities and towns like Northampton, it really doesn't help us as much as it sounds like it. Well, I just want to say one, just a couple of comments about that. So I, I do agree with you about the employees. And one of the things we tried to do in this current year budget, and I, one of the commitments I made um, when I got elected was to really, you know, we had several years of no increases of zeros. And we did try to provide uh, you know, reasonable increases, uh, you know, very, very small, but at least to show that we're trying to, uh, we understand the sacrifices they've made. I know on the school side, same thing occurred. Um, and so, you know, again, you know, all we can do is sort of show people the picture that we're working with. Um, and, and, you know, we didn't have the slide in this one, but, you know, when you look at, when you look at, you know, breaking down the percentages of where all these dollars go, I mean, about 80% of it goes to people, it goes to the salaries and the benefits. And they're the largest component of our budget that we spend our money on. And 
And so naturally when, you're, when you, you know, have pressures, that's who it's going to affect the most. Um, and I, you know, we, we have uh, outside agencies that are constantly trying to lure away good people with higher pay, neighboring states, uh, just looking at a newscast in some police department in New Braintree that was offering huge bonuses, trying to attract people. Um, it's a very competitive environment. Um, I happen to think that Northampton is a great city to work for. We have a great school system to work in, but your point is well taken. On the Chapter 70 thing, we're still trying to unpack the formula a little bit, but they're, they're, they're trying to do some additional things in addition to just giving normal Chapter 70. There were some issues, sort of equity issues in funding that they were trying to address as well in the budget. So they, they actually put more money into Chapter 70, but it's going to communities that need to really catch up in terms of, uh, in terms of where they are um, and what they're spending. Um, and it, you know, there's some interesting stuff I'll share with the school committee about that. Um, some, some slideshows that kind of depict how those uh, formula budgets have played out. And in fact, in some cases, they're raising the amount that school districts are now required uh, to spend on education without giving them commensurate amount of aid. Um, we were at, at, Chat at the Mass Municipal Association weekend, uh, meeting this weekend uh, with a bunch of selectmen and, and everyone was kind of dissecting the budget. I think the town of Weymouth, uh, the way the governor's budget played out against just the governor's preliminary budget, they were going to have to come up with like an additional $2 million in school spending to meet their minimum requirement and they were getting about 200000 in new Chapter 70. Um, so you know, a lot of it comes back to those formulas, but those formulas go back to 1993 and the that you know, Massachusetts needed to provide you know, a, a level playing field in terms of education funding. So we're still bound by those formulas that were set back in 1993, which don't always provide a, a modern snapshot of, of, of what it costs to provide education. So that's a whole separate lobbying piece that we always talk about. Um, but it's very difficult to change those formulas because anytime you change it, it may help one new town, but it's going to affect the council president. Another way of looking at this, and this is more optimistic, <clears throat> putting a better spin on it, but the, the governor's allocation to us is a reflection of how well we're doing, which is, you know, you're rewarded by behaving well, that we're not, and the, the, the communities that are failing are the ones that are obviously in greater need, would be one way of looking at it. Um, it's clearly not a meritocracy. We're not we're not granted based on our abilities. But the fact is that Northampton's diminishing returns from the state are a reflection of the fact that Northampton is actually a successful community, in, in a successful school system, a six, and a, a well-managed city in the in the eyes of apparently any number of agencies that look at it. So that's the rosy way of looking at it. Of course, it, it manifests as less and less money, which is the harder thing. But clearly, I think what it reflects is that we are dealing with the hard challenges as they're presented as a, a rational functioning community. And the communities that aren't able to function and deal with these things rationally are the ones that need that, the, the greater amount of help, is, I would assume, the governor's perspective. So we're doing a very good job. And we have been challenged like this, as, as Councilor Tacey said, this is a broken record. The point of fact is we've been challenged like this for decades, and as such, and I think we've met that challenge every time to our credit very well. Uh, with a great deal, of, and that doesn't come without an associated amount of pain, but the fact is, is that we we are fortunate in that, and that's, I realize now that I, even saying it seems very strange when I'm expressing it in the context of this conversation, but I, I, I think that if there's any consolation to be derived from this, is the fact that we are a well-managed, well-functioning, well-behaved city, and, and we're doing a good job.
joint meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.